uh, Muhammad and this is another video in our series under matrices we are going to talk today about the elementary row operations elementary row operations so let's go and have some definitions for the elementary row operations uh, actually whenever that we have some sometimes we we have some applications um, they are needing in or they need uh, kind of elementary row operation for them so some applications as well as determining certain information about matrices make use of elementary row operation if you are going to think about what is the main purpose of elementary row operation so you are going to find that there are some application and also there are like there is certain information about matrices uh, need to be determined uh, using the um, the elementary row operation we will define three such operations let a be a matrix so one type one operation interchange two uh, rows of a so this is type one which is whenever that we have a matrix and we have like uh, uh, three rows interchanging the rows for example this is considered type one operation we call it interchange two rows of A. Type two operation, this is type two, which is multiply a row of A by a non-zero number. Okay, so we are going to find that one of the rows, we are going to multiply only one row by a non-zero number, scalar value, C for example. And type three, it is type three operation, it is add a scalar multiple of one row to another row. Scalar multiple means that we are going to choose this row, for example, multiply it by C, and add this row after being multiplied to another row, row 2, for example. Okay, so we are having three different row operations. We call them elementary, elementary row operations. Okay, so let's have an example to see how we are going to deal with it. For example, we will look at an example of each of these row operations. So let's assume that we are going to deal with type one uh, row operation, which is, as we are going to say, that let if we want or if we interchange rows two and three of A, okay, so this is interchanging rows two and three. Remember that we have uh, operation uh, type 1 and type 2 and type 3, okay? So remember that. Okay, so if we want to interchange row 2, which is this row, with row 3 and 3, with this row. So we're going to put 1, 1, 2, 5 in row 3, which is here, 1, 1, 2, 5. And we are going to put this row, which is row 3, in row 2. So it is going to be 0, 9, 3, minus 7, 0, 9, 3, minus 7 in row 2, as you can see. So this is interchanging of two rows. Okay, interchanging of two rows. This is row, uh, this is um, kind of uh, row operation 1. Okay, let's assume that we are going to multiply row 3 of A by 7. So this is uh, A. And row 3, which is this one, we are going to multiply it by 7. Okay. Then we are going to have in row 3 here 0, because this is 0. And then 9 times 7 it is going to be 6, 3. And 3 times 7, it is 22. And minus 7 times uh, 7, it is minus 40. Uh, times 7, it is minus 49. Okay. So we have, <coughs> this is elementary row operation two okay now let's go to the elementary row operation three which is and suppose that we want to uh, multiply six minus six times row one and add it to row three of a we're talking about a now we're talking about a so minus six times row one so this is row one we're going to multiply it okay by minus six and then we're going to add it to this row. So minus 6 times minus 2, it is 12. 
and add it to this row which is 0 so it is going to be 12 at the end this is 12 and then minus 6 times 1 it is minus 6 plus 9 so the result is 3 here 3 and then minus 6 times 6 minus 6 times 6 it is minus 36 plus 3 it is minus 33 and minus 6 times minus 3 is going to be plus 18 minus 7 so it is plus 11 okay so this is type 3 operation that we have so now this is a kind of example simple example that is showing for us the different or the multiple type of multiple uh, uh, matrix operations on it on the matrix okay. okay now let's go to the next and put a kind of a theorem so we can understand more uh, how we can use the this uh, row operations elementary row operations let a be an n by n matrix the dimension n by m suppose b is formed from a let's suppose that there is matrix b would be formed from a by n elementary row operations let E, it's another matrix, be the matrix formed by performing this row operation on <clears throat> the identity matrix. So <clears throat> we have A, we're going to make some row operation on it. So the resulting matrix is going to be B. Let's assume that we are going to send the same row operations on the identity matrix that is the same identity uh, operation, row operations that we are performing on A, we're going to do it on I, okay? Then the resulting matrix would be E, okay? So that, that's the point here. Based on this, we're going to find that B would equal to E times A, okay? So suppose that we have A, and we are going to make some row operations on, on this A. We're going to obtain B. If we're going to seem to make the uh, row, the same row operations, okay, like this, the same row operations, on, in the identity matrix, we are going to obtain E. We found that B, which is this one, would equal to E this matrix times A we found it like this okay. we found it like this okay so a matrix formed by performing an elementary row operation on the identity matrix is called elementary matrix so now this is this one this matrix we call it elementary elementary matrix okay why it is elementary matrix? Because already we have done the row operation on the identity matrix. So we call it I, uh, the elementary matrix. Okay? So now this is the simple understanding of what we have done. So let's assume that we want to prove what we are saying now, whether that it is working or not. Let's have an example and see whether it is working or not. Let A equal to this matrix, which is 3 by 4 matrix and these are the elements of this matrix let's assume that we are actually we have here this matrix is 3 by 4 so our i n is going to be i 3 right the identity matrix i 3 the number of rows okay we will use i 3 to perform row operation so let's assume that first interchange rows 2 and 3 of A. So this is rows 2 and 3 of the matrix A. We are going to interchange them. So 1, 1, 2, 5 is going to be here. 1, 1, 2, 5. And this 0, 9, 3, minus 7 is going to be in the second row. 0, 9, 3, minus 7. Okay. We are going to do the same on the identity matrix I3. So identity matrix I3 actually, as you know, that it is going to be 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, right? So this is the diagonal here. 
So we are going to ex ex uh, like exchange the row two and three. So it is going to be zero zero one here and zero one zero here. Just we exchanged okay this row two and three. We exchanged them, so it gives us this. This is what we call it E one. This is what we call it E one. Okay, so now let's assume that we are going to multiply E1 times A. So this is E1 now after changing one here, one here, and this is A. So this is E1, this is A. If you multiply, we know now how to multiply. First row, okay, times the first column would give us this value, okay? So you are going to make this. So we are we are going to have because we have here this is 3 by 3 and this is 3 by 4 so our matrix should be 3 by 4 exactly as we have mentioned in the previous example or in the previous video so this is B now actually let's assume that what is B here it is going to be the same matrix if we have done this go back this is B. We have done this row operation and we obtain B. But when we make the same row operation in I3, it gives us E1. When we multiply this E1 by A, this is E1 by A, we found that it gives us what? B. So what is the advantage of this? The advantage now seemingly to be that we are making the operations on the identity matrix, which is the computational effort is less for us. Th that's it for now at least okay next multiply row 3 of a by 7 to form this is another another matrix formed from a which is by multiplying row 3 of a by 7 so we have row 3 if you remember this is sorry so this is row 3 here we're going to multiply it by 7 so we are going to have 0 63 21 and minus 49 right here Okay, so now we have, this is C. Perform this row operation on I3. Let's put it, we have our, so we're going to multiply our I3 by seven. We're going to find seven here only because we have one here in the I3. So this is the E2. Now try to put E2 times A. You will find it, if you multiply, you're going to find that it gives you, exactly, it would give you C. Let's, let's check this, E2 times A, this is E2, this is A, the original matrix, multiply with the same strategy that we have explained in the previous video, you're going to find that you are obtaining C. This is exactly the same as you have obtained before by performing row operations on A. Okay, okay let's go to another. Uh, another example here add two times row one to row two to form so row one this is a actually two times row one so we're going to multiply a by two uh, and uh, two and we'll add it to row two so we are going to two minus two it is minus four plus one it is <coughs> minus three two times one it is two plus one it is three two times six we said 12 plus 2, it is 14. 2 minus 3, it is minus 6 plus 5, it is minus 1. So now this is D, which is the formed from type 3 row operation application on the original matrix A. Now we're going to do the same, but on the identity matrix I3. Okay, so we're going to multiply row 1 by 2 and add it to row 2. So the identity matrix, remember, it is 1, 0, 0. 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So we're going to multiply row 1 by 2. So this would be turned to 2 and we are going to add it to row 2. So it is going to be 2 here. This is 2. And then this is 0. So 2 times 0, it is 0. So it will be 1 and that. 2 times 0, it is 0. And here is 0 also. So this is the same. Now multiply E3. E3 by A. This is E3 times A. And let us multiply this by our multiplication strategy. You're going to find that it gives us D. 
which is the same matrix as this one exactly okay. so this this proves that our example or our theory is is right here our theory is right okay now what we want to say here is that this result has an important consequence suppose that we form B from a by performing a sequence of elementary row operations in succession that is we perform operation 1 we call it de designated as O1 on A to obtain A1 then O2 on A1 to perform A2 and so on we can put it like this that is the original matrix A we're going to make some operation row elementary row operation let's call it O1 so we're going to obtain A1 and then row operation 2 we are going to obtain A2 and then O3 we are going to obtain A3 and so on and so forth so until we reach to B okay so we can make the same but we can start with I n okay the identity uh, matrix and make this row operation O1 and then we are going to obtain E1 here and then O2 and we are going to obtain E2 here and so on and so forth until that we are going to reach final E G which is the elementary uh, elementary matrix elementary row matrix okay 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 we can perform each elementary operation by multiplying on the left by elementary matrix E J formed by performing that operation on I N how we can make this look to the next slide that I'm going to show so a1 a1 it is going to be e1 times a what is e1 it is the identity matrix after making first row operation in it okay what about a2 it is going to be e2 times a1 e2 times a1 which is equal to e2 times e1 times a so e2 it is the row operations on the matrix uh, the previous uh, matrix okay which is e1 okay that's the the point that we are going to make it in succession the row operations are being done in succession okay and so on and so forth until that we reach to the last one er er minus one and so on okay times until we reach e2 e1 uh, one which is that we have obtained here okay so we designate this as if we are going to multiply all of them here look to this the last term here it is going to be er er minus 1 er minus 2 er and so on until e2 e1 right so this is what we call we call it omega in this order then we are going to find that b is going to equal omega matrix times a furthermore omega is a product of elementary matrices we will record this as a theorem so we are going to I think that it's it's pretty logic to understand it but we are going to put it as a theorem that let B be obtained from A by a sequence of elementary row operations then there is a matrix Omega which is a product of elementary matrices such that okay, this is elementary matrices such that B equals to Omega times A in forming Omega as a product of elementary matrices E1 performs the first row operation on A that's that's understandable right a, E1 it is the first row operation on A then E2 performs the second operation on E1 A take care E2 it performs the second operation on E1 A and so on the order of operations hence of the factors making up omega is crucial right it's important okay so the order itself it is going to be important okay we do not need actually write down each ej to form omega the same result is achieved as follows perform the first row operation on i and the identity matrix so we're going to start with the identity matrix then the second operation on this resulting matrix Okay. then the third operation on this matrix and so on so we are going to have like i n we're going to make some row operation it gives us e1 
right the first row operation then we're going to make row operation 2 on this e1 and we're going to obtain for example e2 and then o3 which is row operation 3 for example to obtain e3 and so on and so forth after all row operations have been performed the end result is omega we're going to obtain omega let's have an example to understand what we are talking about so a equals to this uh, matrix it is uh, 3 by 4 as you can see we will form B by starting with A and performing the following operations in the order given so we have like 1 2 3 4 operations the first one is add minus 3 times row 2 to row 3 minus 3 times row 2 we're going to multiply this row by minus 3 and add it to row 3 okay so minus 3 times 9 anyway this is what we are going to do we're going to explain that this if if we have done it on this it would give us the the uh, the same result as if that we are doing good on the identity matrix so we have like four operations the first one is minus three times row two to row three then we're going to do it now we're going to make it on the identity matrix okay this is row operation one minus three times row two so minus three identity matrix here it is as we said one zero 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 one zero 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 one okay so we're going to multiply row one sorry uh, add minus three times row two so we're going to multiply row two by minus three and add it to row three so this is minus three times minus one here and add it here so we're going to have minus three only here right that's right and one it is already there it is already there now let's do operation two in this matrix resulting matrix what is operation two add two times row one to row two two times row one so two times row one to row two so two times one and put it here so it is two two times zero two times zero it will be okay nothing will be added so it will be the same here one and zero one and zero and then operation number three interchange row one and three interchange row one and three so row one and row three they are going to be interchanged so this is going to tell us something like this exactly so we have here zero minus three and one and one zero zero they are interchanged and operation four was multiplying row two by minus four row two we're going to multiply it by minus four so it is going to be minus eight here minus four and zero that's right so this is omega the omega matrix the elementary row operation matrix based on the identity matrix then what we're going to do we're going to multiply this row matrix by the original matrix a and let's see what is the result when we multiply this matrix which is omega by the original matrix which is a this is matrix a we will get the matrix b which is the same as if we have done all of these operation directly on a you understand it you can do it by yourself and this is what we are going to find in the in class assignment and the home assignment okay you are going to find that if you do this row operation on this matrix you're going to find that it gives you matrix B this matrix can be achieved by multiplying the elementary matrix by the original one how we can get obtain this elementary matrix from the previous starting from the identity matrix and doing all the operations we will end up with the elementary matrix here and we can work with this okay we're going to talk about this um, in brief it is some some wording I think that it's going to be easy for for us to to go through it later it will be important to know that the effect of each elementary row operation can be reversed by an elementary row operation of the same type to this 
To see this, look at each type in turn. If we form B from A by interchanging rows, I and G, then interchanging these rows, another type 1 operation in B returns A. So it is like, you know, it is the reverse of it. If B is formed from A by type 1 operation, then A can, from A we can obtain B if we make the reverse operation. Okay? The reverse uh, operation. Okay, so instead of putting I instead of J, we're going to put J instead of I. So this is no problem. And similarly here, we're going to find that if we want to make type 2 operation, if we're going to make uh, on A, which is by multiplying a row of A by a non-zero number K, then multiply that row of B by 1 over K would give you A again, right? And finally, the type 3 operation, which is if we add alpha times rho i to rho j of a, then we are going to, then adding minus alpha times rho i to rho j of b, okay, uh, to return a. So it is like reversible, something that is understandable, okay, it is the reverse. The reverse of the row operations on the resulting matrix would give us the original matrix. That's what we are saying here. Okay, since all of these reversals are done by elementary row operations, they can also be achieved by multiplying on the left by an elementary matrix. That's the point. No need for doing all of this on the original matrix. We can do it on the uh, identity matrix. We say that A is a row equivalent of B if B can be obtained from A by a sequence of elementary row operations. Row equivalence has the following properties. Let's put it like in a theorem and then let's see how we can uh, deal with it. Every matrix is row equivalent to itself, of course. Okay. If you put, put A for example, okay, and you have one, ele one row here and another row here. If you change it, change them, then you are going to reverse it again, then you are going to instead of putting 1 in 2, after that you are going to put 2 in 1, then you are going to obtain the same original matrix. So this is why every matrix is row equivalent to itself. If A is row equivalent to B, then B is row equivalent to A. That means that if we put like B is going to be obtained by making some row operation on A, then if we are going to make this the reverse row operation on A, reverse row operation on A, we can get B. Okay. We're going to see this in the example, so do not worry about it. Just I want you to know this kind of you know, theorem, and then we're going to apply the example, and you will understand. If A is row equivalent to B, and B is row equivalent to C, then A is row equivalent to C. We are going to make a reverse uh, row operations. Okay. Let's have our in class and home assignment to understand what we are going to do. We are going to solve two examples in in class, okay? And uh, for the home assignment, you can work out this home assignment by yourself at home. Okay, now let's go to the elementary row operations for in class assignment. So now I want you to like look to the example and stop the video and work it by yourself. The first example is we have this A matrix. I want you to add row 1 to row 3. Then add square root of 3 times row 1 to row 2. Then multiply row 3 by 4. Then add row 2 to row 3. Okay, I want you to do this. And also, after finishing this one, you are going to do another problem, which is this another matrix A, and multiply row 3 by 4, then add 14 times row 1 to row 2, and then interchange rows 3 and 2. Okay, stop the video now and try to work them by yourself. Okay, let's see how we are going to deal with this. Solution for the in-class assignment here. Uh, the final result, I hope that you got this final result for, <clears throat> for the omega. Okay, which is we are going to work on the identity matrix and we are going to obtain the final result. It is going to be 
omega times the original matrix, this is the final result. I hope that you have obtained it well or right as it is here. Okay. Well, I'm going to give you the details of, of this. You can work, work them out. This is the details exactly. So starting from A, we're going to do uh, like uh, three different um, or two different ways. First of all, we are going to start from the identity matrix and we are going to make all the operations until we reach to omega. And then we are going to verify this by starting from the original matrix doing the same operations and we are going to find that we are going to end up with the same the same matrix okay as if it will be multiplication of the omega by originally so here this is the uh, this is the identity matrix operation one two three four actually I have four operations it is here the first one add row one to row three so this is row one to row three will be one here one two three so it is going one zero one and then operation two then add uh, square root of three times row one to row two so square root of row one which is this row times radical of three to row two so it is going to be exactly uh, radical three here one here because this is zero and this is zero also so it is the same then operation three it is going then multiply row three by four where is row three this is row three multiplied by four so it is going to be four zero four that's right and then the last one then add row two to row four this is the last operation row two to row four uh, to row three row two this is row two are going to add it to row 4 so row 2 it is going to be the same we're going to add it only to row 4 so it is 4 plus radical of 3 and 1 and 4 then our omega it is going to be this one right this is our omega that is already we have done on the original identity matrix okay now we're going to multiply this omega by the original matrix multiply this is omega by the original matrix which is a this a work this multiplication by yourself and you're going to find this is the resulting matrix let's assume it, it is B now try to make this exercise by yourself starting from A now do the same operations 01, 02, 03, 04 as it is written here do it on, on A starting with A itself make all the operations as we have done and this is the details of it you can go through it and then you are going to find that you obtain the same matrix here. They are the same, the same B. They are going to be the same. This means that we are <clears throat> we are right in our assumption that whatever we are doing in the identity matrix is going to be the same as if that we have done it on the original matrix. The result would be the same. I mean that omega times original would equal to the same as we worked our uh, original matrix with the row operations okay the second example also you can work it by yourself as I said you should start working it by yourself and after that look to the answer so here it is multiplication this is our equation uh, our matrix which is the original one multiply row 3 by 4 so this is the first we are going to work on the identity matrix starting from uh, uh, I n here it is I three because we have three by four matrix as we have explained in the previous video. Then O one is going to be multiply row three by four. This is row three. We multiply it by four, so we have four here. And then this is O two, which is add fourteen times row one to row two. This is fourteen times row one. Add it for to row two here. Fourteen. This is one. This is zero. This is right because there there are zero here. And this is O3, uh, and then interchange row two, uh, rows three and two. So we're going to interchange this one and this one. So it is going to be 14, one and zero, and here zero, zero, four. So this is, this is going to be our omega here. Okay, this is going to be our omega. 
this is going to be our omega then multiply this omega by the original matrix A you're going to find the result is this B matrix verify what you have done here by starting from the matrix A and do all the operations until that you reach the final step compare this final step with the previous one you are going to find them they are the same they are going to be the same B okay so please work out this example by yourself the two examples and check it and then you are going to be familiar with the row operations okay so again uh, you need to make this uh, this homework I think that is going to be easy for you do it with the same strategy that I have solved the examples here so do it once with Omega and multiply Omega by the original and then work it again based on the original matrix until you reach to the final results okay thank you this concludes our video I hope that you understood well what we have explained in this uh, video and remember remember well that we were talking about the elementary row operation the main purpose of it is related to some application that we are going to see in the next videos how the row operation is going to be very easy to, for us to, to use and very convenient way in order to obtain some important features of our uh, matrices and solution even of the uh, equations or uh, differential equations. Okay, I'm going to stop here. Thank you and see you in the next video.